Inspire Data 1.5 builds critical data literacy skills and engages students. They actively explore and analyze data using dynamic Venn, bar, stack, pi, and axis plots to interpret information and draw conclusions in science, mathematics, and social studies. Students work with data using two unique environments, table view and plot view. In table view, they record and collect data. And in plot view, they explore and analyze the data using multiple plot types. Originally funded under a grant from the National Science Foundation and developed by Turk and Inspiration Software, Inspire Data 1.5 has been created and published by Inspiration Software to give students tools that support improved data literacy. Getting started with Inspire Data is easy. From the New Starter screen, you can create a new database, open an existing file, download an e-survey, learn to use Inspire Data with classroom projects, lesson plans, quick reference cards, and even more teacher resources, and access more than 100 content-rich databases for science, mathematics, social studies, and more. Hi, welcome to this segment of Digital Discoveries. I'm Tim Holt, and in this, uh, this particular segment, we're going to talk about Inspire Data. Obviously, we just played the short video introduction to Inspire Data. And Inspire Data is a product that we have provided for all of our teachers at our Title I campuses in the El Paso Independent School District. So this segment is actually for our teachers. And um, so what we, need to, uh, what we need to talk about here is what is Inspire Data, how do you get it, and what would you use it for? So we're going to assume uh, with this, uh, this segment that you've already downloaded Inspire Data onto your teacher laptop computer. And if you haven't done so yet, just get with your instructional technology specialist and they'll show you how to download it. It's a very, very easy download and it's a, it's a quick install. It's not actually a very large program. It's just uh, you have to, once you download it, you have to put in the, the serial number. But it's pretty easy to do. And uh, so now we're going to talk actually about Inspire Data. So when you turn on the program Inspire Data, you're going to get this screen. And so you say to yourself, well, what the heck is Inspire Data? Why would I even be interested in this? Well, Inspire Data allows your students to look at data beyond just a chart or a simple graph. Usually when our students are looking at data, they are looking at data that's in some kind of chart form or in a graph form. And that's about all they can do with it. They, they don't uh, manipulate it anymore. Inspire Data allows students to actually uh, manipulate the data. So uh, I, uh, talking about it and actually showing it are two different things. So I'm going to actually open up one of the uh, sample databases that come with Inspire Data and we're going to look at uh, how to play with it. So uh, the program actually comes with a hundred sample databases and those sample databases are in science, social studies, mathematics, and even in the arts and, and other uh, fields of study. So. Uh, I'm a, a science teacher from way back, and so I always love to look at science data. So here I am. I'm going to look at science. And I know that uh, in our middle schools and our high schools, we always are looking at the periodic table of elements. And so one of the, one of the um, uh, databases that are included here is the elements. And so they've entered the information on all of the elements on the periodic table. So I'm going to open that up. And when you open up a database, it just looks pretty much like a standard uh, Excel type database. And so if you look here, I'm going to uh, zoom in a little bit, you can actually see that they've entered some data, the name of the element, the atomic number, the atomic symbol, the classification, the year it was discovered, what its melting point is in Celsius, and what its melting point is in Fahrenheit. So that's pretty standard stuff. I mean, most kids can actually kind of enter that data pretty easily. So what do you do with it once you've got that data into it? Well, in uh, Inspire Data, you can actually start playing with all that data and visualizing it in different ways. And the way to do that is the first thing you want to do is you want to hit this little 
chart there, plot view. We've got the chart view, that's what we're in right now. What we want to move to is the plot view. So we're going to click on that. And there is all that data, but it's now represented in different points. So these are all the elements that we just opened up. Now this could be any kind of data. For our purposes here, we're just using the, the data from that one database. But there's lots and lots of different ways that students can enter data. So if you click on one of these, you can actually see what that is. Like for instance, I just randomly picked one. It's a uranium. Everybody's familiar with uranium. And it gives you all the information of uranium. Um, and click on another one here that's plutonium and so on and so forth. There's all the different ones. There's one that I don't even didn't even know it existed, Darm Stadium. So <laughs> I never even knew that that was. So you've got all this data. So now what can you do with it? Well, there's different ways that you can start plotting the data and start plotting the, the information in Inspire Data. So let's look at a real quick one. You can make some awesome Venn diagrams using Inspire Data. Um, so for instance, we have those different fields that we were talking about earlier, the melting point in Celsius, the melting point in uh, the year it was discovered. So for instance, I want this field to be equal to, let's see, let's see. I want the field, I have to pick the field. Uh, let's say I want the atomic number, and this is great for our science teachers. They know what I'm talking about. If you're not a science teacher, you're like, oh, I don't understand it. But um, uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to collect that out, and I can get. I want the atomic number to be greater than, oh, I'll say 50. So I'm going to enter data, and so now look what happens in our Venn diagram. All the uh, all the elements that have an atomic number greater than 50 are all now within this group, and so I want to look at that there. Let's see if that's really true. Well, here's dubnium, and its atomic number is 105, so that's absolutely true. All the ones that are greater than uh, 100, uh, greater than 50 are in there. So let's, let's keep going. Let's add another one. Um, so now I've added another field. So now I can start isolating information, start making it a little bit more interesting to me. So now I want the atomic, uh, let's say the melting point in Fahrenheit to be, I don't know, let's start playing with it, greater than 300. I'll just see what happens. So now look what happens. In our atomic number greater than 50, melting point greater than 300 degrees Fahrenheit, all of these right here in the center have an atomic number greater than 50 and a melting point greater than 300. Let's see if that's true. Let's click one and find out. I'm going to randomly click that one. And let's see if that's true. Well, the atomic number is 103, so it certainly is greater than 50. And its melting point is 2,960 degrees. It certainly is much, uh, much greater than 300 degrees. And so now I can, I can actually even add up to three, uh, three of these. So now I want my classification to be equal to, hmm, I want it to be a transition metal. Now again, teachers that aren't science teachers are going like, what the heck is he talking about? So look at this. This is very interesting. None of the data here, none of these are a transition metal that have a, um, a melting point greater than 300 or atomic weight greater than 50. So this is a cool way for students to start looking at data. There's other ways for students to look at data too. For instance, uh, we can look at charts. And I can say, I want the atomic number. Here's all the atomic numbers in the 50s and 60s. And so now. I can see, look at, these are how many uh, elements are in the 40s, these are how many elements are in the 50s, these are how many are in the 60s. That's kind of some interesting data for students because they yeah. don't break that down that much. And so let's look at some y-axis, x-axis stuff. We can start playing it that way too. Atomic, whoops, let's not do it that way. Let's do atomic number. And then this way, let's do melting point. So now I've got melting point versus atomic number. It's probably not the best one. Let's do uh, atomic. <laughs> and so there we go. So we c the students can look at all different kinds of elements. And the last one here is uh, uh, we can do a, a chart of some kind. We can label our, st our all of our stuff in there. These are some pretty awesome tools that are available. I've just touched the surface of what Inspire Data can do. Inspire Data, you can even 
can't do it right now because it takes a little bit of time. You can even put an online survey and then Inspire Data will actually, you can download the information from that survey. Students can put it in there. Can you think of some way that students can visualize data instead of just entering data and looking at data. This is what Inspire Data is all about. It's an awesome, awesome tool. It's available for all of our Title I campuses, all the teachers in our Title I campuses. If you need more information about how to use Inspire Data, remember it's not just a science tool, it's a math tool, a social studies tool as well, um, to call your instructional technology specialist. Thank you for joining me for this segment of Digital Discoveries. Thank <laughs> you.